All right, so we know that we're living in a time where there's just a constant push uh, for people to compromise and acquiesce to the different evil agendas. But what I love to see is people pushing back and standing up for what's right. And I love to call these people out who are doing the right thing. And uh, I recently heard about Brittany Kerr, who is the wife of Jason Aldean. He's a very popular country singer and she got a whole lot of backlash for her statement. People were saying, oh my gosh, she is so transphobic. So let's look at what she said in her statement. She said, I'd really like to thank my parents for not changing my gender when I went through my tomboy phase. I love this girly life. And she has a video above that statement where she's putting on her makeup, just being girly, getting all dolled up. And I loved to see the fact that this video has well over 200,000 likes. That lets me know that you still have so many people um, with their heads on straight. And her husband also commented and he's like, well, thank God you didn't change your gender because otherwise we wouldn't have worked out. In other words, he doesn't swing that way. And you had a lot of people calling her transphobic. You know, they love to name call to just get you to shut up, right? But the only real phobia I see is against people who are speaking the truth. That's the real phobia. And she went on Fox News and she was talking about, you know what? We have an age limit on everything, right? We have an age limit for people who smoke cigarettes, drink alcohol, sign up for the military, driving, all of these different things. So why is there no age limit for children to transition? Extremely valid point. And this is something that I have been saying for a long time. Why? Why are they allowing children to take these drastic measures? You have to really question this stuff. And one of the things she mentioned was the fact that she went through her tomboy phase, but clearly she's showing that, hey, this is something that I am no longer going through. And you have a lot of children going through different phases, but they're making permanent decisions. And it made me think about me growing up. I was a big tomboy. I was a huge tomboy. I would actually you know, make little dirt castles and roll down hills, you know, with my brother and sisters. My sisters, they were tomboys too, the ones who are closer to my age. And you know what? We would just have a lot of fun. And one thing that I would do was I would wear baggy clothing and not like sagging my pants or anything, but just baggy clothing. And, you know, I had this really straight robot walk because I wanted to make sure my butt didn't twitch when I walked. Um, just kind of giving off this whole vibe of like, hey, I'm tough, don't mess with me. And for me, it was a big defense mechanism because I was bullied at school, I was bullied at home um, by my siblings. So it, I just needed to find a way to feel tough and protect myself. And when I was 12, I started doing like 50 to 100 push-ups every single day in the bathroom. And I, my, I really started to get muscles as a 12-year-old girl. So again, this was all a way for me to protect myself because I didn't feel like I had any real protection, right? So there's a reason behind why people do certain things. And I didn't even really start to grow out of that tomboy phase until maybe about my second or third year in college. So in college, speaking of tomboy phase, real quick story. So I actually used to go to the gym and I made friends with about four different guys. And we would work out together, we would lift weights, and, you know, we would uh, go and play basketball together and then we would play ping pong together. And it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed hanging out with the boys. So just being in that tomboy phase, though, one of the downfalls for me was it seemed like 
the guys didn't really see me like that. A lot of times, sometimes they did, but a lot of times I, I just didn't feel like I was really able to engage in the dating market like I wanted to. So slowly but surely, and with the help of my older, very feminine sister, I started to grow out of that phase. Again, being in that phase, it wasn't for me that I liked girls or women, but like I said, it was just this whole comfort aspect. Um, so my whole point is sometimes people grow out of that, but they're making these very permanent decisions based on, um, a lot of times temporary emotions. And also back in the nineties, when I was a kid, uh, there wasn't the pressure to just say, oh, just transition, be who you are. If you were tomboy or quote unquote soft. And one of the things that people don't even think about, the people who are pushing this stuff, or maybe they do think about it, but you know, they try to find some way to wiggle around it. What happens when children say, oh, you know what? I was born a girl, transitioned to a boy, but now I want to go back to being a girl. What happens when they change their minds? And what about the physical and psychological damage? Right? Is this something that's permanent? What happens to their bodies? Will they be able to have children? And we're gonna do another video going into more detail about that. But these are very serious questions people need to think about. So as a result of Brittany speaking up and saying, you know what, thank God my mom didn't let me transition, don't tread on our kids, and just all of these very powerful statements that need to be heard, um, her husband, Jason Aldean, the PR firm that represented him for 17 years decided to drop him. And this guy has been at the top of the country music charts 27 times. I mean, he's he has an extremely successful career. But because of this statement, they're like, we can't withstand that heat. And if that's the case, then you probably didn't want that PR firm representing you to begin with. He'll be just fine and hopefully he finds another uh, PR agency or maybe he doesn't even need one, right? But if he does find one, hopefully he finds one that aligns with his morals and values. What Jason Aldean said in a 2021 interview still stands very relevant today. And here's what he said. He said, at some point it's gotten to where if you're a conservative and you're in this business, you're not allowed to speak. He noted, it's hard to go lay my head down at night with a clear conscience, feeling like I'm a coward for not saying the things that I want to say or I feel like need to be said. Absolutely. People are tired of feeling like a coward and being like, oh, well, I got to shut up, right? I I'm just a singer. And, you know, let me just stick to entertainment. I don't agree with that. I think whatever your profession is, whoever you are, you have a right to speak out. Even for people that I don't agree with. I wish you would be quiet if you're spewing foolishness. But, you know, even if I don't agree with you, you have a right to speak out and to your opinion. Don't let people put you in a box. A lot of times you will see when you are standing for truth, you won't have to deal with the consequences of going along with a lie. A lot of people who say that they're going to have their children transition, if that child gets older and realizes that that's not what they wanted to be and that it was a huge mistake, that child may resent you for the rest of their lives. This is a decision that could affect them permanently, both physically and emotionally. Do not take that risk. But anyway, let me know what you think about what Brittany Kerr said, her statement, and also what happened to Jason Aldean, her husband, PR firm dropping him after 17 years. Um, this is just part of the price you pay for standing up for truth. But in my opinion, it is well worth it because when one door closes, another bigger, better one, when you are standing for truth, will always open. So anyway, that is all for now, but 
I want to thank you so much for watching this video. And also, if you have any video suggestions, because I, I want to engage my audience more, send an email to me at this address and tell me what your video suggestions are. And I will pray about it and, and do my best to see if we can incorporate that in the future. Okay? But anyway, that's all for now. But thank you so much for watching. And until the next video, take care. God bless you. And I'll see you in the next one.